again, I'm going to leave the vacation. We're going to use Kirsten and also to you and Mom. Um, and you can see Stephanie's on vacation now, and I'd like to give us, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Ginger Salakwa, our flight safety coordinator. So let us continue our worship for our team. <laughs> Seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. 
So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father David. Only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gideon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart for you. You have kept for him his great and his steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant a king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked. Both riches and honor are your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the congregation will recite Psalm 111 in alternating verses starting on this side of the church. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. We are the deeds of the Lord. There is the Lord all the light of heaven. His word is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. When he makes part of his works to be remembered, the Lord is gracious and the Lord of heaven. He gives food to those who fear him. He is never mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his purpose, giving them their lands and nations. The word works in the hands of faithfulness and justice. All of his commands are sure. They can stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He said, Grant the redemption to his people. The name of the Lord is awesome, is his name. The fear of the Lord was the beginning of wisdom. Let us act accordingly with open understanding. His praise and glory is forever. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. 
Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Christ. name of Jesus, who is the bread of life. Amen. The privilege to be here worshiping with you this morning while your priest has some time away. Um, I recently moved from the Diocese of California, where I had the privilege of serving with Amy Cook, who is known and loved, I know, by, by many of you. Um, so it's particularly fun for me to get a chance to meet this congregation that she speaks um, of so often and love so much. So thank you. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus' words from our gospel text today are shocking, and they're supposed to be. We're supposed to be sort of taken aback. Those strange cannibalistic connotations are supposed to make us pause and ask questions. They're supposed to be there. It's not a translation issue. And we know this because of the reactions of Jesus's initial hearers. They're disturbed and shocked as well. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They ask in our text today. Jesus is making sure we can't gloss over what he's saying, that we can't let it pass by without comment. What could he mean? Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. What does it mean to eat Jesus' flesh, to drink his blood? I came to a new perspective on this question when I was at a conference a few years ago and got to have a good chat with a friend from seminary that I hadn't seen in forever. We were reflecting on our ministry in the 20 odd years it's been since we graduated and he said something that really stuck with me he said when it comes to christianity i'm just not interested in optimization anymore i'm interested in transformation he meant that he had grown frustrated with the idea that christianity is nothing more than a nice addition to our lives something we can add on that will make us happier or maybe a little bit nicer, an extra activity for when we have time for it. That kind of Christianity, the Christianity that exists just to optimize our lives, just to make them better, just didn't interest him anymore. He wanted the kind of faith that doesn't optimize our lives, but transforms them, turns them upside down, changes them, changes us, transformation, not optimization. At first, I felt a little bit resistant to what he was saying. I mean, I spend a lot of time trying to convince people that our faith will make their lives better and richer and deeper and more connected. And I believe with all my heart that if you practice your Christian faith, your life will get better. I believe that Christianity does optimize human life. The more I think about it, the more I am convinced by what my friend is saying. After all, the Gospels don't describe lives optimized by Jesus. They describe lives transformed. And maybe that's what Jesus is trying to shock us into seeing with our Gospel text today. That in receiving the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, we are being 
being invited in some, into something much bigger than a self-improvement project. After all, what happens when we eat or drink something? Those elements, those things that we eat or drink become part of us. The coffee that I drank this morning is coursing through my veins. The food I ate has been transformed into fuel for every cell of my body, enabling to me to move and, and breathe at this moment. What we consume becomes intimately part of us. There's no part of our body where it is not. It permeates us, giving us the ability to live and move and have our being. It transforms us from within. And in the same way, to consume the bread and wine that Jesus calls his flesh and blood is to be permeated on a cellular level with the power and the presence of the living God. Transformation, not optimization. To consume the bread and wine is to open ourselves to be transformed, to be changed. Jesus is inviting us to allow the very presence of God to abide in us, to be in every cell. That's what it means to eat Jesus's flesh, to eat the bread of life at the Eucharist. Through this lens, walking forward to take the bread at communion is a very brave thing. It means to accept the all-consuming presence of God. It means accepting Jesus's invitation to be transformed. And isn't that what we really want? The bread of life and cup of salvation, the body and blood of Jesus, a life that is really life. Because I think that we as human beings, we hunger for something real, for death, for challenge. We want something that can meet those deepest needs of our soul that exist in a place that we can't quite articulate. I don't know about you, but most of the time I settle for optimization when what I really want is transformation. We want to be transformed, sort of, but there's part of us that resists it because of course we don't want to change. There's a part of us that wants to keep our faith sort of on the margins of our lives, to leave it as something that's there for support and inspiration when we need it, but something that doesn't challenge us. And to be clear, I think God is absolutely there with us when we're in that mode, when we are trying to keep God at the edges of things. Because that's the amazing thing about God's love for us. There is no fear in love. God doesn't love us any less when we sleep in on Sundays. But I do think there's always, always that invitation to more, to transformation. Because that's where the good stuff is. At that deep level, that's where the true joy is to be found, in death, in giving ourselves fully over to God. However, transformation doesn't happen naturally. Our relationship with God in Christ is like any relationship. To build something real, we have to show up every day. Transformation is God's work. It's something that God does in us by grace. But it does take work on our part to be available and to be open for that transformation. We have to step forward and say, yes, I want to eat the bread of life. We consume that bread and we allow the spirit of God to permeate us, to change us. Faith absolutely makes our lives better. It optimizes our lives. There are scores of studies that associate practicing a religion with better health longer life, more happiness. But Jesus is always there inviting us into even more than that. He invites us to eat the bread of life, to be transformed into people more able to love, more able to serve, more able to follow in Jesus's footsteps. May it be so. I invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the I believe in God.
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, but what we have done, and what we have done, we have done our own hearts, and we have done our own hearts. We have done our own hearts, and we have done our own hearts. We have done our own hearts, and we have done our own hearts. Almighty God, have mercy on you. We give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, to strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, to keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God and God, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ with bread. And when he finished, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we are proclaim his resurrection, resurrection. We, we, we await his coming. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all of your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we give those of us trespass against us, and we do not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power of God. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived, died, and rose again for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith.
us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of the Son of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have had us the spiritual food and the sacrament of the body and blood. Set us down into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage, love and certainty, but lightness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may you be a new creation, Christ to those to whom Christ shall send you. May the blessing of our one God, the holy and undivided Trinity, be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.